Hey everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful time. Today, I would like to share my experience of using this Autolytic AH90. It can connect to streaming services like Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, or even AirPlay, UPnP, everything you can connect it through Ethernet port using Gaster Render. Headphone stage is very good, similar to SMS or DL300, same amount of power output as well. There is like a headphone volume uh, safety feature. So that feature is only available in auto and headphone only, not available in line only outputs. So let's say your volume control at the 50, right? You are at the either auto or headphone only setting. Whenever you plug it in, your headphone, it will go down to safety volume. That is also applied to a, when you unplug it, that it will go back down to 30. So that is very nice feature for your safety. Let's go through the menu system here real quick. So this one is a little different than the other menu system. Usually everything goes down when you go clockwise, but this one is counterclockwise to go down. So this is headphone gain. I'm setting at the low output auto. The phase is XLR balance phase. So that is uh, I'm using at the normal brightness and all that. So that's all you have. And then when you need to upgrade firmware, you just hit upgrade. So it will get into that. So that's it. Very simple menu system. Nothing more other than that. Uh, gain control setting. If you keep on going up, it will get into fixed settings. So that's what I use most of the time, but the sound quality is no different between maximum 80 and fixed volume. I try a few different setup, right? I started off with uh, my dedicated streaming setup. I was using uh, SMS AO300 and using RCA out from this AH90 the sound quality is neutral and clean but it can get a bit bright for my taste especially you know when i'm watching movies or streaming music so that's more to do with the uh, internet adc stage of uh, ao300 i didn't like the way that it paired with the ao300 so i switched it over to topping pa7 plus and it sounded very good and then i move it to my main system Sony HAPZ1 ES serving as a music server, USB A to C cable connected to this AH90, and that uh, right cable, the Dallas XLR cable, directly feeded to my main integrated amplifier, Arcuface E4000, and playing with these two speakers, Pioneer TED S1EX and JBL L100 Classic 75th, and this AH90 combination. I didn't try any SACD disc. I tried coaxial input and CD playback as well, so it sounded just about right. I mean, there is nothing to complain in terms of uh, digital to analog conversion and noise control. As a streaming deck, it works based out of a uh, Linux Debian distribution OS, same as the R26 or A26. Menu system is same as the uh, pretty much all custard audio product. This Autolytic AH90 has a slightly less feature compared to A26. It doesn't have a pure DSD feature, so it's all DOP as far as my understanding. They are going to fix it in next firmware update, but if they do that, the volume gain control may not be available if you are playing uh, DSD files. We need to find out when they release the update in before end of the year. So that is the uh, one thing that I want you to be aware of it. Otherwise, whether you're using fixed gain or maximum gain like 80 position, it doesn't affect any sound quality, whether DSD file or higher streaming or your own PCM files listening, it doesn't change sound quality at all. I like the way that it can deliver the sound using optical coaxial and USB. If I'm using Ethernet, that's more to do with the streaming services as well. 
it tend to be a little bit on the brighter side for my taste compared to other inputs that I use. A little bit noisier in the back, right? But overall, connectivity and features and everything works very well. This one is very similar to those of uh, SMS uh, DL300 or a lot of uh, AKM based design. 4191 EQ handle the incoming digital signal and purify it and put it back out to 4499 EX for analog conversion. Major difference is this one has the uh, the Gaster Render Engine and as well as it has a CK1 uh, uh, clock that feature inside, so which totally shows a different in sound quality. Plus this one will give you a little bit more crisper and punchier mid-range with, uh, without forward sound signature. DR300 will have a richer tone and balance with a little bit uh, more richer mid-range and upper mid-range sound reproduction. This one get that kind of richness but more refined and better separation and improved in clarity and detail yet without getting bright. So nice balance in overall uh, sound signature that it can produce. Whether I'm using this S1EX or JBL100 Classic 75th doesn't matter. So when I use the S1EX, the sound is so engaging. I mean, I cannot stop listening to it. I find it to be very revealing and transparent sound, yet engaging notes that it can produce. AH90 is most balanced sound quality out of gastric products, aside from A26. But this one is pretty close, probably like I don't know, 80% close to A26 in terms of uh, accuracy and sound quality. Human voices and vocals, like chesty voices, are very accurately reproduced. And best of all, better than other AKM based decks in general, is it has more precise stereo image and more articulate bass notes, not only rich. So bass notes are more articulated and well refined compared to like the uh, 300. So that's why you are paying extra money for that because CK1 clock is making it different in sound quality as well as the fine tuning of the product. Most of my music listening, I only use XLR outputs from this AH90, but when I try RCA output, it's just a tiny bit different in like background and separation and that's about it. Other than that, pretty much comparable as long as you match the volume properly. Totally standout performer because the price is good and features is just about perfectly feature. Direct competition is going to be something like Matrix Mini i4. So that is a really toss up, right? This is the deck that you just sit back and relax and enjoy your music. The bass notes and upper mid-range and mid-range and everything in those regions are crispier than other AKM 4499EX decks in $500 price range. For the high frequencies, it's gonna be very precise and wide soundstage with nice amount of air and space between the notes without getting forward or without getting shouty or bright. So it just perfectly reproduced in highs region. So a little bit of disclaimer here, right? When I say it doesn't sound bright, meaning I was providing, I was feeding good quality music. When the music is recorded brightly, it will totally show it as well. Every minor flaws will show up if the music has a, some sort of noise or everything in it, but this equipment itself doesn't introduce or produce any noise into your system. Overall background is very quiet and very, I wouldn't call it very deep and dark background. It's not there yet because that kind of deep and dark background is hard to get in this price point, but it can 
get there with a little bit higher price point like if you go up on Custard A26. Everything combined, right, from lows to highs to price to performance and streaming capability and everything, $600 is perfectly priced. Maybe only downside for some people is it doesn't have built-in apps or application that you can control the device. So that's where the downside is. So if you are waiting in the market to buy great sounding deck without spending a lot of money, this is a great option for you to choose. When I was using this S1EX, it's incredible. So smooth, rich, and I mean, I can't stop listening. Then I, when I switch over to this JBL 100 Classic, it can also bring you the vividness plus the richness in sound like you are hearing actual analog music playback kind of sound quality. But when it comes down to real, like a holographic stereo imaging and very precise uh, instruments and notes and placements and everything, that kind of territory, this one has a probably like 75 to 80% of A26. The rest is depending on your system and depending on your taste. A26 is ultimate buy, but I kind of like this AH90 a little bit more than A26 because this one is slightly more forgiving in some recording. So that, that's why I slightly prefer AH90, right? So if you are after a nice and precise sound quality without compromising micro detail and resolution and everything plus deep and rich sound signature, this could be a great choice for you. This AH90 is one of the probably the most closest to sounding to analog music than their own R2R decks, in my opinion, based on my experience with many different decks. This AH90 can give real high end analog rig run for their money because it's gonna be. A lot of money for that kind of sound quality get out of a pure analog system turntable system but this deck will do that for you under 600 and you keep the change price is good performance is great so i can't recommend you enough my friend wholeheartedly recommend it thank you very much for watching and happy listening next one is it's called kiss of life and let's hear some bass.
On the bass, Mr. Koriboy Keskesane. On the guitar, Ormayoskesane. 